this was uh, a, a, a challenge that she was going to mount against uh, something she felt, I think, for the moment, uh, in the moment, a very, uh, very profound uh, injustice. She was physically handled. Essentially, she was charged with prodding, prodding, and Nova Scotia for one cent. She was beautiful. She, her hair was beautifully done. Uh, her makeup was impeccable. Uh, she was well dressed and she was very well spoken. And they carried her out to a patrol car, hauled her off to jail, and she spent the night in the town lockup. Yeah, what's going on? It's your boy Trap Jesus, and you're now listening to the newest talk show on the air. What's going on with your boy Apollo Sun? What's good, player? Hey, yo, yo, yo. What's what's happening, Trap Jesus? I'm chilling. I'm feeling good, man. Feeling good. Yeah, um, it's a long time coming. We here though. We here. Like it was a lot of bouncing around to get get us on the same schedule, but we here now. So look for us. Um, I'd like to make a shout out to uh, everybody in Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's filed the Desmond Day. And uh, the track you just heard that was based around Viola Desmond, which was uh, it's Canadian black history. And I guess you would call her our Rosa Parks, you know? Right. She was in the theater. Rosa Parks was on the bus. It was the same mentality, though. So Google her, look her up. Get in tune with your history. That's right. So, what is what are we like? What are we gonna base the first segment on? Because we have a lot to talk about, you know. So wow, wow, man! Like we had a good conversation earlier. Uh, man, it's like there's there's a lot of issues in the world. I mean, you could start. Damn, you could start like anywhere, you know, police brutality. Uh, there's some ISIS going on. Uh, you know, there's protests, riots. Man, like, you know, like where to start, right? How about <laughs> we start with uh, the introduction? And right. Just tell the people, because like you're always the man behind the station, but I don't think these people really know you. You know, like I've known you for a few years and seen, seen what you do. Uh, took part in a few things, whether you know it or not. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's a long history between us right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, like, for me, it's like, I kind of know you. So I know a little more than, you know, people come see you at uh, 98.4 and they just see you as Trap Jesus, right? Basically. So it's like, where to start, man? Why, why, don't, why don't we get into who Trap Jesus is? First and foremost, and like we like like your build up to today, like with the station, because you never always had the station, but you always been in the game. You know what I mean? So yeah, from black back in our blog TV days, <laughs> our stick right. cam days. Yeah, people people like okay now and to to take it back even further. Like a lot of people that know me knew the whole DJing thing from way back. You know what I'm saying? Even back as far as like 1989. That's that's how long I've been doing this. <laughs> like for real. Like DJing and stuff like that. So it's like each decade it came with a new task. That's how I looked at it. So on the internet, like where did you start on the internet? Just to give people a little path of your history, right? Where on the internet did you go? Because some people might have bumped into you and don't realize because you, you, you had a different name too, right? So they might not even know you for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, actually, well, only a small few would know me under the Piff alias. Yeah. You know, and that came during the 90s. No, I could say, yeah, during the 90s. Mm, no, 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 I'm not actually on 90s. It was 2000s. In the 2000s, that's when the Piff Elias kicked in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what I know he has, right? Yeah. Like DJ Piff, right? Yeah. 
Right, the Piff was actually short for Piff Inc. Radio, but for some reason I carried it as a nickname. So yeah, yeah, and it was like, uh, what what was that? I'll tell you what. What I used to laugh every time because like when you do your your DJ mixes back like, say in that oh uh, six oh, the earlier years that I'd known you, right? Mm-hmm. You'd always have that little uh, that little. I don't know. I guess it was a drop or whatever. They go Pimp, Piff Inc. Radio Player, right? <laughs> yeah, that was my first ever drop, <laughs> and I made that myself. <laughs> no, that was funny though. Like every time I hear it, because like, I I don't know. It just it gave people like like if you heard it, it gave people like your attitude. Like like I don't know. It just added to so much because you know most people they just DJ, mm-hmm. you know, play their songs, blah blah blah. But you was that guy who. You would throw the drops in, you know, like you would do the, the broadcast from the desk with the two mics with the like, you know, what I mean, like you used to take those extra steps that a lot of casters like if they actually seen you like it was real, like like or, you know, like you you put an effort into it. Yeah, because we used to like these other casters today, like they just get there at the computer desk, they cast, they play a little bit of music, yada, 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 you know. Yeah, because we used to um, play music videos. That's what it was. We used to play a lot of music videos. And in between the videos, I would come on and take live phone calls. That was the first, like, the how the show was first based off of. I used to play music videos. And then in between each video, I would take a live phone call or two. And, like, the caller would request to see a certain video Blah, blah. We would do it. It was like it. W- it was kind of like a twist off a show that I used to watch back in New York City. You know what I'm saying? And that show stuck to me so well that I decided to bring it to the internet, which they wasn't doing with it. So it's basically what I did was I just took a piece of that element, brung it to the internet, and next thing you know, it started off from that. Then once that kind of like dried out, I was playing music i found a couple of dj programs that i can use over the internet you know on the computer and that's where the dj and process kicked in for online radio exactly and and you know like you, that's when i say like 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 you weren't the same as like you always stood out because you always took them extra steps like like what made you get into like like the program side side of things you know what i mean like like was it the fact that like like the webcam maxes or the the super max like tell people like how you used to do that like for us who know you and didn't know like how you you took those extra steps you know what i mean well honestly i can't even say when the idea popped up it was it was more of once it was done like you know once like you know what it was okay i see it now when i first got the first program which was um uh man what was the name of this and i said it earlier too uh supermax or nah it was cam track cam track yeah yeah and um it was more of a facial because that's what i did i go i looked up webcam programs things i could use to make the show a little better so on the visual side so then cam track was the first thing that popped up so i I looked for it i downloaded it it required you to pay for it so we put the money into it and everything i think it was like 24.99 for the program so we brought the program and started utilizing it was so many different things for it so i just started looking for other programs and once that one kind of it, it ain't like it died out it was like the company itself wasn't upgrading the program anymore and so you were kind of yeah you were kind of stuck with what you had like yeah <laughs> I, I, I get what you mean so but then, now it's like the like all that stuff that was before really like green screen was popular yeah. uh you know you know what i mean like like what they got now like the all the adobe encoders uh just all the different webcam maxes nowadays if if you will you know what i mean and it's like you know like like people didn't realize back then well some people were on it but you could you could make like your show professional looking 
almost, you know, and, and it even had like some of the audio stuff. You could do all your audio playlists and stuff. And, you know, like like people didn't realize like the capabilities of the of those programs. Like we already spoke about, like, remember them old old school shows like uh, Rockland USA, for example, and uh, how he used to, he would run the many cams and then he'd do his games and then he'd come back and he'd do his, he had advertisements, the whole works. And you would have sworn like he put a lot of time into that, but those programs really helped him out. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> and he even acknowledged you. Yeah, he did a, a blog. Did you know that? Like he acknowledged you on a blog too, like saying, like he recognized what you were doing because he was doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, I remember that so clear. I was I was reading through that blog and big shout out to Piff Inc. TV. Or yep, that's what it was at the time, Piff Inc. TV. <laughs> wow. So, so yeah. Um, so okay, so you started off uh, on Stick Cam. You worked your way over to Blog TV. Yeah, because a lot of broadcasters started coming out of the woodworks at Stick Cam. So yeah. <laughs> it was like, okay, it's too many to get that shine like I had on my first broadcast. So basically what I did was, I'm, you know, I, I had got another program, which was Super Webcam. And that actually was the reason how I ended up on Blog TV. And um, once I did that, I hooked in with Blog TV. Blog TV was giving me a lot of light, a lot of shine in the beginning also. So it kind of made out to get more fans. And then with the whole Blog TV thing, it was just more of who, who's next. Like, you know, being the only black dude on their home page, it was just like, yeah, it was like, who's yeah. next? So then that's where, you, that's where you went from there and whatnot. So... So what? So what made you start uh, ninety eight point four? Was that because Blog TV shut down or? Nah, actually, that you know, with that story, it was like I always wanted to do radio from the jump, but the whole thing was how to go about it. Just like how we spoke earlier, when I was like, I could explain it to you, but it's gonna take. Like, yeah. yeah. It's one of those scenarios. So I went through that whole three-month process to figure it out and all that stuff. So when I started DJing on Blog TV, that was what I called the show. And I started making banners, Piff Inc. Radio, Piff Inc. Radio this, Piff Inc. TV, Piff Inc. Radio that. And until this day, Piff Inc. Radio is still there because if you look at the banners, it says WPIR. And for those who know me from back in the days, that PIR is Piff Inc. Radio. Yeah. Ain't nothing left from from back then, you know? I guess you'll you'll never shed that, you know, even though that's kind of like your part of your infancy of who you are today. You know what I mean? Like, like you'll never shed that piff. Like everybody, somebody's gonna know you always as Piff Inc. Radio. You know, for those who don't know you today, right? Right. But uh, yeah, it was it, we had a lot of good fun times on blog. You know, like, Woo! like just, <laughs> yeah, like you know, if it wasn't like the Goonies or you know, like like to those who know, like there were some funny times on blog. We had right? a lot of gang wars on blog tv <laughs> we was like the first to set off a gang war over the internet and yeah it like, was like it was it was too much <laughs> yeah it was like you go and you fill up somebody's room if, if you didn't like them or whatever then you know it was as soon as somebody got the ops everybody had ops and then clean out the whole room and keep it moving right yeah and but, it's always like goonies goonies i remember that so clear like the you want to know and the, what the it blog was stars and who yep. else was it? The barcodes. You know what it was? It was more of we was doing security. That's how the Goonies escalated because we did security for people's shows because they had this thing about people getting ops and they was booting out people's showrooms and stuff like that. So what we would do, like, yo, okay, if you want to do a show, have some of the Goonie members in there and we'll play as your security. No one will get ops. You ain't got to worry about none of that booting your room. Anybody coming in asking for ops or stuff, we will boot them. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then next thing you know, the yin, here come the yang. <laughs> <laughs> had to come in and regulate. And if somebody had a problem, you go recoup the rest of them, right? Yes. And then, you know, uh, who got a problem type thing. Yeah, man. I tell you, I just, sometimes I don't even really think about it like those days. But then now that we're bringing it up, yeah, those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> For well, real. you know what it was? I'll tell you what it was. It was like the days before Facebook and Twitter. Like, it was real people who just decided to get on the internet just to get on the internet, right? Yeah, you couldn't hide Nowadays, behind it's pictures. like Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Pinterest, all these sites bring people to the internet. And most of them aren't really internet savvy. They just want to go check their Facebook or mm. they just want to check their Twitter. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so those were the days because, like I said, you, you came on to come on. And you know where you knew where you were going. You know what I mean. Nowadays, it's just like, oh, they go on to Facebook, they see some advertisement, bang, they're over on Amazon, bang, they're you know they're all connected, right? So. And then I didn't even have Facebook then when I was on Blog TV. I didn't have a well, Facebook account. I ain't know nothing about Facebook at the time. Well, it wasn't Facebook. You know what it was? It was a uh, tiny URL. <laughs> You That's know, like what if it was. you wanted to post a link or something or a, a video or a picture or whatever, it was like tiny URL and them type of sites, right? I don't know. Because when I got on the computer, I just went straight to Blog TV. <laughs> I didn't know nothing about no Twitter or Facebook at that time. So, so okay, getting back to you. Um, so, so, you own this station. Um, what, what is it about the station that people should know well other than the fact that we um are actually working on our third year for the most unsigned music the most uncut and the most exclusive music played on any two radio stations you know what i'm saying we're actually working on our third year to hold in a number one spot you know and we get a lot of love from the celebrities and stuff due to the fact that we um, we cater to their artists and stuff like that. They're new artists. So normally people just send us their music like, yo, check this out, blah, blah, blah. But we also, you know, we we, we do productions and um, promotions also. So um, it's more like, you know, artists can come to us. If they don't really have either have the time to sit sit on the um, internet and promote their music or promote whatever things they got going on, they can come to us and purchase a package, a promotional package. Where the promotional package, it actually leads you into next to that door that you need to cross into that mainstream world where you're trying to get to. Okay, so. Purchasing a package, you you. So what do you, what are you saying by a package? Like what what would an artist like say? I had some music, and I I came to DJ Trap Jesus say, look man, I want to get on your station. Like how would I go about doing that? And just give me a breakdown of it. Well, like I said, well, there's a few different packages. You know, it all depends on what you want. If you want a little bit of exposure, you can cop the first package. You know, where it actually is seventy five dollars. And what seventy five dollars can get you is um, radio rotation and a live interview, you know, things like that. But the it's more like I said, it being that it's just promoting. It's promoting you as the artist. Being that most people that do music, they don't normally have a manager, A and R, or none of these cats that does the promoting for them. So what we do, we do that the whole shebang for them for that particular price or other prices depending on what you want so we tend to like tell them like okay if you can't splurge you know so you could start off with the 75 dollar package get you some airplay in there you know but we tell them that you know we tell them that it's just for one month but we will give you another month you know what i'm saying just yeah. off the fact that because you actually want to do business with us we're going to show you that extra month of love you know what i mean and that's just kind of like, a, that's just you throwing that on there type thing. Like, yeah. Yeah, I get you. See, because a lot of artists, right, like from what I notice, I, I'm a, I guess, I guess I would say I'm a recording engineer slash artist. I, I've been in studios of plenty 
okay, and plenty musical situations, if you will. And uh, you know, a lot I, I come across a lot of artists who they you know like they they don't like they're they got some good music, and you know they could possibly make it somewhere with their music, but they don't know the ins and outs of how the industry works. You know, like the actual business side. And I'm not saying uh, all artists are like that. I'm just saying in general, like just the, the guy who does the stuff in the bedroom, like the music part is the easy part. Like like when they get out and they get in the industry and they start dealing with radio execs and big labels and this and that, like that's a whole nother ball game, right? Yeah. So so when you say like like I could come to you and just chip you off a quick little hundred bucks and throw me on there somewhere you know like that's kind of a bargain to me like if i were the artist you know what i mean yeah because like, we like, all know that most of these other fm terrestrial stations they're charging seven to ten grand just to get uh one spin that's all yeah. it's really going to get you is like one spin you know what and, i mean and that's not even in like like the the, the hot spot of the day nope spin, you know not like, at all. Like, like that'll be at night or some shit. Like that won't be at, it, during the afternoon when everybody's listening to your radio. They could just pull some some madness and just be like, "Hey, well, I'm gonna play your song," but they'll play it three minutes before they get off the air. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? And then it and get then, cut then off then for a commercial, off at the end, and then it goes to the next program. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? Gets cut <laughs> off for a commercial or something like that. But yeah, all in all, like like. You know, I try to educate as much as I can when I come across artists and stuff. Like, I've come across a lot of talented artists. And, uh, you know, there are some in the know. Like, some understand, you know, you need some kind of budget to really promote and do what you do. You know what I mean? But at the same token, like, some got to realize, like, you know, say they hit you up and, yeah, come on, man, give me, they always want the, they always want the brother discount. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know that seventy five dollars that that keeps the station going. Like like there's stuff you got to do, and you, you know what I'm saying. Like like you got to make some moves yourself in order to keep everybody organized in your playlists. And you know you got there's airway time. Like there's a lot of stuff that behind the scenes they don't realize. Like that costs the station money, right? Yeah, because what it is is like we take a we take a large percentage of the money from these packages that we sell, and we pay the bills. Like for the for the for the station to keep these streams running, keep the websites up, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and things like that, and that's the stuff they don't seem to either know or don't really care for, because it don't have nothing to do with them. But like I tell people, I'm like, okay, when you purchase a package, a package from us, you're gonna get everything that you will like you would like to try on your own, but we'll do it. Like I said, we'll do it all for you. But and we'll show, we'll tell you exactly what we're doing, so you, when the time comes and then you're ready to put it out there, like okay, everything is set. When they see your proposal, they're gonna see all of this. They're gonna see that, yeah. The bio, the interview. They see that your song is getting spinned through our widgets, and all that. People can vote on your music, get hopefully get it into the top ten joints of the day because we have a top ten playlist like most radio stations but like with most radio stations they normally pick the songs that's going to be the top ten or the corporation that's running the radio station is picking these songs you know what I'm saying and they're getting paid by the artist by the artist's label to keep their songs in rotation that way with us with our widget we don't pick the songs the only songs we actually pick is the old school joint of the day and the top um the 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 most talked about song of the day those are only two songs we pick the rest from 10 down to one the fans the listeners they can vote on that they pick these songs okay okay see i never knew that right i just thought maybe you put together a playlist and it plays but that's actually pretty sophisticated because you're playing what people are voting on want to hear right yep Opposed to you just playing it and hoping they'll like it, right? Or me just playing it because I want to hear it. Yeah, yeah, I get you. And that's I why I totally. call it the People's Station because you, the people, can actually vote on what's in, what we play. Like, for real. <laughs> that's kind of how it should be because, you know, like you'll hear that crappy song that 
the radio promoter got paid like 30 grand to play for the whole month, like heavy rotation. And it's like nobody even really likes that song. But after you've heard it like 50 times a day, you, you kind of get used to it. You know what I mean? And here's another thing I would like to explain to the artists that are probably listening in. There is a difference with rotation. There's light rotation. There's medium rotation. There's heavy rotation. And then there's power hit. Now, the power hit, that can be, I mean, like, your song could get played probably like 20 times out of the day or something like that. You know what I mean? And that's where, like, those artists, that be their, their label kick out that 30 grand just to get their artist's song put in their weight requirement of power hit. And that's how they push these songs on to people. So, like, oh, I'm tired of hearing the song. Yeah, because it's in the power hit. Now, when they change the level down, then you won't hear it as much. You know? Yeah, I get you. And, you know, like, like explain, explain to, like, how the hotspot works. Well, like, you know, the hotspot is basically the, the, the highest point of the day where you, the most people are listening. You know, so say, like, our hot spot will be in the mornings, like from anywhere between 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. And that's only because everybody that's listening, most people that got the tuning app are overseas. And, okay. you know, they're up when we're sleeping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Their day is going by and we're in our bed sleeping because it's 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? And that's when they're listening. So when our down point could be probably like 10, 9, 10 o'clock, because now they're in their bed sleeping and our people is up and around, but our people do work and things like that. So most people don't listen to it until they get home in their comfortable spot, which would be somewhere around 3, 4, maybe 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And then that's another hot spot of the day. You know, on the east on, on the eastern bill um coast it's a <coughs> hot spot. On the western coast, it'll be like four hours behind. Yeah, exactly. Depending on the time zone. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, all it is. So so with that being said, like like say say I bought a package from you, like because most radio stations will charge you different too, like when it comes to being in a hot spot as well, right? Yeah, they will actually charge you a little extra on top of that. So, so what I wonder is, like, if I was to, if I was to come to you and say, here, you know, here's a hundred bucks, throw me in rotation, and uh, maybe I'll get a quick interview with you as well, where we can display who I am. I'm an on-site artist. Um, that hot spot doesn't matter to you. No, because we all any time would be a hot spot, because the way the song is, when we throw it in that rotation, it's gonna get that play. Yeah. So we the hot spot on this, as far as the station is concerned is not as, as, as effective as terrestrial radio because they they got to be there to do that. I don't have to be here to do that. All I have to do is just put it in that rotation and that song will get that hot spot every time it'll be on every I can make it I can make my playlist out to where like it'll play every hour on the hour. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's all about how I set it up. You know what I mean? If I want to set it up to where, like, okay, if you're paying for, like, like the there's one, there's the $75 package, there's a $150 package, and there's a package that's $400. Now, that package right there comes with everything. <laughs> I mean, everything. So give me an idea between... The lowest, like seventy-five dollar package to the rate right to the basically the bells and the whistles. What's the bells and the whistles gonna give me? All right, the so seventy-five dollar package. All you getting is really airplay. Okay. Now the hundred and fifty dollar package. You get one song in rotation for two months. See, compared to the seventy-five dollar package, you get one song in rotation for a month with a live interview. With the second package, you get one song in rotation for two months, will it most likely extend to three? Because, like I said, I throw an extra month on top of that. Okay. You know, and then you get the live interview, and your interview is on our Mixed Cloud. Um, 
uh, a mixed cloud partner account. So, <laughs> you know, so that's that's just another extra perk into the package. And then our third package, which is the whole shebang, you get two songs in rotation for three months. So basically, you can give me one song now, and then whenever you do a song somewhere down the road, you don't have to pay for that other song. That song is just automatically, you just automatically send that to us. Okay, and, we'll and throw that in. In. Okay, yeah. I get you. You get a live interview, which where the interview will be featured on the website once it's packaged and everything. Um, you would also get an artist page on the website, you know, because we don't normally just give out pages for anybody but we will give your artist page for our website so when people come to our website they will see your name on our top of the website people could just click it and listen to all your music if you got music videos watch your music videos read your bio everything will be about you on this one and then it will be featured on itunes our soundcloud and our partnership account on youtube Okay, I get you. So you get so, the whole so it's shebang. Almost like, it's almost like a press kit. Basically. You you put together a press kit right for the artist on your website. Yeah, for that um, $400. Exactly. I, yeah, I get you. So so with the radio stuff, like, what what makes you do it? Like, like what, why you, why do you have a station? Like, why, like, like some people, they like to, I don't know, they like to go to the gym. You like to do the radio, you know what I mean? Like, what gets you up to do the radio? Like, what is it about it? Because I I grew up listening to radio. Like, we have our radio in New York. It was Hot 97. We saw the changes in, like, how the radio station. Like, we had a lot of different radio stations in New York coming up. It was a one radio station. It was 89 Tech 9. Um, it was, like, further down in the dial. Then we had another radio station before Hot 97 became Hot 97. It was another radio station that played a lot of, um, what kind of music did it play? It played a lot of like old school, but they, they, they catered to more alternative sound type music. But then what it was, when whoever decided to purchase the, um, the station, they turned it into a hip hop station. So that was a good look for us for like New Yorkers coming up. We had our own hip hop station to listen to. And like I said, just the feel of having that that you can you could take a song and change someone's life with yeah. just playing their song on the radio cuz I mean a person don't even have to have a record deal and have their song played on the radio and they have, they have feel like a whole different person when they hear their song on the radio. It actually yeah. is more of an uplifting spirit, you know. <laughs> so when I do that, when I get people's songs and I throw it on the station and letting them know, like, how it is and I show them the widget and everything, people who hit me back, you know, they, it's like you can feel it even though you're not face-to-face -face with these people, but you can feel how happy they really are, yeah. like, when they see this. It's and a life-changing experience, right? Like, you know, like, you just went from... It, it, you know, like the, everybody associates TV and the radio, like that's that's where you get famous, right? That's where a lot of famous people are. And it's like just to have your five minutes of fame, it's like that makes you famous for that five minutes, you know what I mean? In your own mind, right? Yeah. Like it's kind of it's like, like validation, right? Yeah, it's like people, you know, you could be having a, a bad day and then that song play on the radio, you'd be listening to the app and then your song come on. You in a whole new different mood now, <laughs> you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's like you know, the first time, like I've had some music played on the radio, and actually on like major networks and in films, for that matter, right? Mm -hmm. No, no lie, no lie. Like I, I, I don't know. I, I, I was in the industry a long, like a little while ago, and I kind of got uh, turned off of the industry, the music industry, right? Mm. And I don't know. There's a lot of fake love, especially in the the area I'm in 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 Canada. We don't really have an industry. Like that's why when you see like famous Canadians, they had to have gone to America to make it make something out of themselves, right? Yeah. Like the, like the Jim Carries, the Drakes, the the Michael Myers. You know, like all them Canadians. Like they've been cherry picked because they're 
during that waiting pool, if you will, right? So it's like, uh, for the most part, being Canadian, doing music, or doing anything in the, the Hollywood business, if you will, it's like, it's almost impossible. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's, there's so many other Americans that could have been in that spot type thing. True. Opposed to sitting in the Canadian waiting pool, if you will. So, yeah, when you do hear that first, you get that first little 15 minutes of fame, it's like it does change your, your whole outlook on, like, I don't know, it's like you've been working so hard. Like they say, like, an overnight success is really a 10-year plus success, you know what I mean? But people only see you come in overnight, but they don't see that other 10 years it took you to get there. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's like, yeah, as soon as you get that first overnight success, it's like, finally, that 10 years or however many years is finally like like yielding me something, you know? And you know, it's like, okay, in the same sense, you know, like they're radio personalities that they came from the hood. You know what I'm saying? They know what it meant to try to get yourself, you know, recognized on the radio. But then they, they pull that snub shit to where like, okay... Oh, I don't have to play your song on the radio. Okay, what is yeah. your point for being on the radio then? Exactly. And then you could tell that they only doing it for a check. They not doing it for the love of just taking somebody from the hood that that that's good and very talented and pulling them in. You know, and it's it's sad to say this because uh, like our black race, they do it all the time. You know what I'm saying? As soon as one gets some shine, they 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 throw they tarnish someone else's dream because they have the power to do it you you know what we call that there's a word for that right Mm -hmm. it's it's called being blackballed yeah and that happens a lot especially in the it it happens everywhere but especially in the black community you're right because you know we're we're in that situation where it's like we're crabs in a bucket like nobody owns a label like we don't own a boat we don't own a a plane you get what i'm saying we don't own nothing but we have all the talent and they know that you know and so they're there with the, the as the gatekeepers to either deal or no deal you and then you're left to you know like like what do you do you got to start like being that crab in the bucket otherwise the next guy's in line waiting to get the deal or no deal right it's like that a whole illuminati thing look you ain't going to let me rape you i'm going to tell everybody don't mess with you <laughs> well, you see how they did Michael, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and and we all know Michael was not a fucking pedophile, right? Yeah, we know they, that. He what he what it was with Michael. They wanted they wanted his publishing. This is yeah, what people no, don't get. They wanted his publishing. He was not selling. And so what they do, they try to tarnish you. This is called a smear campaign. For people that don't know, it's called a smear campaign. They take everything and try to make it all negative about this individual just so people won't support him anymore. Or yeah, won't believe a word a that he light. say. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what they're doing to Bill Cosby right now. They're doing a smear you know, what, campaign. What do you think? You think you think he did it? Hell no. And if he did have sex with these women, they were they were down for it. Because he was a famous black man, and he had a lot of money. He was driving around in Ferraris, and they were thoughts. Yeah, exactly. There wasn't a such thing as thoughts back then, but clearly that's what they were. They were thoughts. And now they're trying to come out the closet with all this, oh, he did this, and he pilled me up. Like, no, you was a drug addict thought coming up, and you just hung out with him, and he got you the drugs. That's it. Yeah, yeah, it could have been. But there's been, like, actual accounts where they... Like there's been, I can't remember the, the the one girl's name, but what they said was is, or what she said was, is that they offered her money to lie about it and say that he did do it. I don't know if you caught that or not, but yeah, that's part of the smear campaign. That's a, that's part of the package. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you know, if the one could have done it, you know, like like you see some of the more famous ones are kind of like has beens, if you will, and it's like now, it's like the, it's almost like they're doing it. Not just to smear him, but to put their face back in the meat. You know what I mean? Back, you know, any, into the any limelight. Air, yeah, any airtime is good airtime to them, right? Mm-hmm. So any yeah, I, I seen that, and I was kind of <laughs> like, yeah, this is kind of suspicious. You know, I, I always come with that suspicious. I don't know, call me conspiracy theory, whatever. But it's like 
I, I just don't take everything is, that is said unless, you know, I go through the steps of either proving it or disproving it myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you know once one person say something, somebody else going to say something, somebody else going to say something. It's like living in a project. Somebody tell a lie about you to somebody else, then that person going to tell it to somebody else, and then it's next thing you know, now all these people going to come to you and say, oh, yeah, you this, oh, you that, oh, you this, because of that one lie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Smear campaign. All I'm day. Gonna, <laughs> I'm going to start using that one. Because right. you do hear that a lot. But yeah, getting back to your station. So, so where do you what's your, like? What's your goals? Like, where you plan on going with this? Like, actually, I'm trying to because I'm looking for some angel investors right now because I'm trying to get a building. Okay. I want to see like this. Is the thing like when I was in Uniontown, my whole at thing um, objective was to get a building because I see it was like it was a lot of people was out of jobs so i'm like with this radio station it actually put some jobs in people's hands you know what i mean yeah. so and but then i saw like okay they, the reason why they ain't got no job because they ain't want one <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, so then when we relocated the plan is still the same you know get a building put some jobs in some people laps you know because there's still a lot of smart people out here but they just because they don't have that paperwork to say that they're smart enough to do it it's kind of hard to get them jobs you know for what they do yeah. yeah so so what's how's your how's your radio station how's it set up then like do you, i i thought you were in a separate building or like, i'm in a studio okay, okay okay but the way i have it i have you know you ever seen swordfish what the movie yeah Long, long time ago. Yeah, you see how he had all his computer monitors and everything all set up in one little okay, spot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. me. <laughs> okay, I get you. Because I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to get the... I'm trying to see Trap Jesus, you know what I'm saying, on your daily grind. Because I think what it is, is like you spend a lot of time putting a lot of people out there. But you're just kind of the man behind the email. Nobody really gets to, to see who you are or... Like your intentions or, you know, like what are you supposed to interview yourself? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, and, I, like, and I always tell my boys, I'll be like, yo, the day I get that live interview, televised interview or whatever interview, that's that interview that's going to change the way a lot of people think and change some of this world the way they their actions are. Because a lot of that interview is going to be so truthful. It's going to scare the mess out of so many people. But then they ain't going to have no other choice but to follow suit because it worked. Yeah. Well, you're here, man. And it's like, personally, I've seen you grow over the years. I've seen you grow actually tremendously over the years. And really, that's what it's about. You know, like, like I'll go on to some of... Uh, some of the, these old casters, broadcasters or whatever, you go on their sites, they're still doing the exact same thing they've been doing like seven, eight years ago. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's good to see like where you came from, especially from somebody who who watched it. You know what I mean? And it's like where you, where you came from, where you're at now and where you intend on being, say, in another, say, five to between five and eight years of what you're doing, right? Right. And that was the thing. I, I watch a lot of them. So, you know, because I know when I got into the radio thing, I didn't know everything. So I watched a lot of broadcasters. I watched a lot of interviews just to, to you know, to mold myself into this, what I got going on right now. You know? I feel you. I feel you. So uh, in regards to the show, like, like you know, we do a little intro, get to know Trap Jesus, right? Everybody can see now where you're coming from, at least get a little more into depth with who you are and what in your professional life, right? Mm -hmm. um, we were going to talk about doing the show more so uh, like on the topics yeah. and, you know, like we'll keep the lines open and this will be like maybe for future shows. But for now, you know, like, like we're, we're just crawling before we start running and we'll, we'll keep the lines open, incorporate you know, a couple of the good heads that, you know, I got a couple good heads that I stay around and they're up to internet savvy quality. 
and I know you do too, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we got our, we got our boy there, Skull Side. I don't know where he is tonight, but you know he he's definitely an asset to any conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, <laughs> he hit me up yesterday. He was like, "Yo, when are you?" He said, "When are you on the air?" I was like, "You're late, dude. I've been on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on calm mode now." <laughs> so I know yeah, he probably the show's like, over, Scott. Side. Yeah, hey. I'm like it's always been over for hours, dude. <laughs> You know, no, he's shout out to Skull Side, you know. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. He's smart. He's intelligent. I mean, he's always on one one gear, and that's like, like when you go zero to sixty, he's always on sixty. <laughs> but, but definitely a smart brother, and always can add a little bit of content to anything, right? Mm-hmm. Like he, I like those prank shows he was he used to do. I don't know what steered him away from that because those were actually hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't even that. It was like. He did the prank shows. He do uh, like the venting shows where he's just roasting people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I swear he had a diss track every single day. He do a, a new diss track, right? <laughs> <laughs> that nigga had more diss tracks than a Fifty Cent and Locks beef or some shit. Like yeah, that. yeah. If, if people knew him, I think he could make the Guinness World Records of having diss tracks. Yeah, That's crazy. He's, he's up in the hundreds by now. He, right? he, he, it doesn't matter. Even if you didn't rap, he got a diss track coming for you. <laughs> 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 Fucking good times, man. Definitely yeah, good man. times. And this is like the thing, like with the stay. Another thing with the station, I like to stress real quick that you know there are different types of shows. As y'all listening in, the fans are listening in right now. This show is actually called "What's Going On," you know, and it's it's based on a lot of stuff that. You know, in real life, real actual facts that that is going on in the world that most shows won't talk about because they're the people that are paying them is paying them not to speak on these things. Yeah. You know, and we got like the unsigned hype showcase. Shout outs to Mach Moses. He hosted with me um, on Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern. We got the um, the top 10 joints of the day, which is Monday through Friday, three o'clock in the afternoon. You know, my DJ, you know, DJ Trap Jesus Mega Mix, which is at 6 o'clock every Monday through Friday and 4 p.m. on Saturdays. Then we have um, System One. For those who like Caribbean music, reggae music, they are on Fridays and Sunday nights from 9 to 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, and this is like we, we are trying to put a lot of decent shows on this station so when people come on there they'll be locked on there for hours yeah (laughs) you know what i mean yeah exactly and you know it's all about programming like there's basically you're just trying to make it there's there's something for everybody yeah like some people like to talk radio where it's just a couple of heads sitting down having a discussion about some cool stuff yeah. And some people like the mega mix. They like to hear the DJ scratching, mm-hmm. so on and so forth, right? Like, it just depends on who you are. And that's, what's, that's what makes people come to a place is there's something for everything. You know what I mean? Opposed to just, like, you just doing all the songs you like and you doing all these mixes you like. And you know what I'm saying? Like, like most stations kind of are like that. Like, it's all about them. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's not just, like, like you're trying to broaden the horizons and put a little bit like for the artists for the you know for us the t- little talk little talk we're having like this is the type of stuff that mixes things up opposed to just playing that same old mix every single day 24 hours a day adding a few new songs blah 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 blah. you know what i mean Amen. like that those days are done like you got to be almost versatile nowadays in order to compete if you will right yep and like with our mega with the mega mixes each day is a different type of you know scenario so like mondays we'll do the old school mega mix so we're playing for the whole two hours nothing but old school music you know tuesdays is normally drama tv tuesdays because we base it around on mondays because for those who like to watch um those reality shows normally the best ones is on on monday nights so we brand our tuesday show around the drama tv the drama that be on monday nights so and then wednesday we do like new music wednesday so most likely every wednesday you know we're dropping a lot of new music you know um thursdays is wild out thursdays 
You know, just as like normal branch off of just crazy, wild stuff. You know, you never know what may be what may happen. You know, on Thursdays. Then Friday we got the TGI Friday Mega Mix. That's basically all turned out, turned up, ratchet. It's is it's, it's just everything <laughs> possible under the sun on Friday. And then we got the All Star Saturdays where it. You know, I'll be on the air mixing, but I'll have a special co-host with me. You know, who's, who who you sh- Who'd you shout out last time that was on the last show there? Um, oh, Eb Psalms. Okay, okay. She's a um a female that I used to actually I used to DJ her parties back in Brooklyn, and um she said she always wanted to do radio, but she never knew that I I had took it this far. She recently just found out that I really was in the radio, like, and then she she got on and and, and host the show with me one day. So that was good. Like I said, I give everybody a shot. You know, if you want to, if you want to bring your own show to the station, and as long as you could come up with the topics and you know what you want to speak on, I will be glad to help you out and put your own show on the station. Yeah, I, I've actually I've seen you do quite a few banners. Yeah, like especially in the last couple of days, like just different shit, like. You know, like you're you're always on there. That's what I say. I'm like I'm like, does this guy even sleep? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, where do you where do you even find time to sleep? Because every time I I flip on, bang, you got this going on, you got that going on. It's like, what do you got a robot sitting there just posting shit for you? Or nah, I sleep and I do get some sleep. I sleep between the hours of six and twelve, from oh, okay. six a.m. to twelve p.m. I wasn't <laughs> so- sure. I thought maybe just hit a button and you refresh and. Bang! You're still freaking posting shit and doing shit <laughs> like, like man, you're always on there though, you know? Like, yeah, because like, it's always something going on. And being that I, I have I the website, you know, we blog on the website. We put out posts and stuff like that of news, whatever celebrity scandals, ratchet videos. Well, not fight videos or nothing, but like say if something took place somewhere and it's just crazy out of the blue, out of the ordinary, we'll put it up there. You know, and we promote all our shows through the website also. Each show has their own web page on the website, have their own fan page on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. So we like we really reach we we go the the extra mile for each yeah. show. So give all the listeners just in case they, they just got the tune in app or whatever, just give you might as well give the uh the web address. It's so um the web address is WPIR nine eight four FM dot Wix dot com for now. Slash WPR. You gotta backslash WPR right after that. <laughs> and how would somebody directly get in contact with you? Uh you can either call up the station as three four seven five zero one nine seven four seven. And I know people be like, Hold up, if their station is in Pennsylvania, why do we have a New York number? Because I'm nice like that. <laughs> you know, I, I got to thank know. Skull Side I, you know, on that one because he, he the one who showed me uh, the whole number schematics. So shout out to Skull Side once again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, yeah, so for future shows, like what we were talking about earlier, like we're going to format this as like a round table, right? Yeah. From from what you know, like we could we could either go off topics, or you know, just kind of like open discussion amongst a few good heads, if you will. Right? Yeah, talk about the stuff that people don't normally talk about at the barber shops, or won't talk about on the air, or some stuff like that. So some of the upcoming topics for for the upcoming shows, we've decided on uh, maybe talking about uh, the law. Uh, police brutality, like everyday, everyday kind of conversation pieces, but on, on a real scale, on a real light. Uh, what else do we talk about? Uh, the financial collapse that's coming. Uh, mm-hmm. Man, there's so many topics, man. We could get into the terrorism. Uh, we can even talk about the Bible if you like. Like maybe if, uh, like if somebody's listening in, you know, like down the road, anybody can call in at any time. Like, we'd even take suggestions. Like, if you want to email a topic and 
maybe you have some personal life experiences, especially say with police brutality, like like we were talking about earlier. We actually had a really good conversation about that, mm. and you had touched on uh, you had an experience in the other like. Where did you say you lived before? You where, in, um, where you Union Town. What's it called? Union Town. Yeah, yeah. And you you was telling me about some like some. It was kind of crazy, man, because you know you you see that going on, but where I'm from, that kind of stuff happens like nonchalantly. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you get what I'm saying? Like like it's very swept under the rug, very smug, and then bang! Before you know it, behind your back, all that shit gets done. And then you know some it set off a crazy chain reaction too, like, and for those who like you know YouTube video watch the videos that we that we posted about it is still on YouTube till this day. Yeah, but just just tell tell the listeners like just the basis of that situation. You don't have to go into all the details and stuff. But it's like, that's a real situation, man. Like, you hit me in my heart when you told me about that. You know what I mean? And say, like, okay, like, when you're an out-of-towner, say, like, for me being a New Yorker, going into a place like Uniontown, it's a small town, five police cops, five police cars maybe the most. Um, You know, they're not, they're, everything around that town is based, is slow. You know what I'm saying? Education, slow technology slow and most likely people are so distraught that they only do things to destroy themselves mentally physically and emotionally every day so when when people like myself come to towns like that they look at us in a negative light because you know like if you ever seen the movie life and then (laughs) and they went out there to get the liquor and everything, the booze and how they was looking at them. They was calling them like those New York cities and things like that. Yeah. We went through these experiences down there, you know, because they were like, oh, everybody from the city, they arrogant. You know what I'm saying? They think they all this and all that. I'm like, you can't be mad at us because we are educated. You know, we took the time to educate ourselves or school was important. You know what I mean? There was just things like that that they they couldn't understand. So like one night we was in, we was hanging out at a bar. You know, a couple of the New Yorkers that we knew that were already down there took us to a bar. We were hanging out, but it was just like I said, with this town is so crazy that if you go down there by yourself, you can get caught up in the web. You know what I'm saying? Of just destroying yourself. 